Yeah, I just saw it. Don't ate me. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Spider-Man Homecoming. And yeah, I finally just watched it for the first time. Now I know some of you are probably going, why did you take so long to watch it? I'll admit, I was stubborn. I saw the Spider-Man movies directed by Sam Raimi in the theaters, all three of them. And even while the third one's a piece of garbage, the first two were really good and I grew up watching those movies. And then I saw the Andrew Garfield movies come and I was like, okay, maybe they might do it better. They didn't. I didn't like the first one and I didn't even bother watching the second one, even though it looked like a giant Stephen pile of garbage. So when this one came out, everyone was saying, oh, it's actually good, you know, it's gonna be great. However, I had the same people say the same thing to me about the Andrew Garfield ones and they were wrong. So I admittedly was very stubborn and selfish and I avoided watching this movie because I was exhausted by the fact that Spider-Man had once again been rebooted for the third time in less than 20 years. I know that's a bit hypocritical when you're saying you're a movie critic and you're avoiding a movie because of this reason. I just had Spider-Man exhaustion. What do I actually think of this movie? It's actually pretty good. Tom Holland, yes, he gets Spider-Man down. He not only gets the idea of Peter Parker as a teenager, but he also gets the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man aspect down. And he's not held back because of his abilities or his strength or his personality. He's held back because of his financial limitations. Tony Stark gives him this suit. However, when he's back with Aunt May, he needs her to buy him a new backpack because he keeps losing it. He doesn't have enough money to go out and buy another backpack. I liked this aspect of him. I also really like the aspect of him having a friend who is basically his oracle. To be even more precise, I actually thought of him as Max from Batman Beyond. Remember how Terry McGinnis had Max as his friend who knew his secret identity and helped him along the way sometimes? That's who I thought this character was, in a sense, in their own interpretation. So yes, the Spider-Man aspect was great. It honestly is the best amalgamation of Peter Parker, Friendly Hood Neighborhood Spider-Man, into one movie, into one character. Tom Holland nails it. Now as for Michael Keaton, I had heard a lot of good things about him. I was excited to see him as a Marvel villain. And he is a good Marvel villain for the first five minutes. He literally has a explanation, a intro to his character that does make sense and you kind of start to get motivation for him. And then it just clean stops. After that, his whole motivation is, I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for my daughter. But there's no reason as to why. He just wants to live rich. That's it. Yet if he's so rich, that he's making all this money off of all these alien weapon deals. How is he sending his daughter to public school? He's driving around on a Jag. Why isn't she in private school or something like that? So that's the part that I didn't really get. Honestly, Michael Keaton was a bit of a letdown in terms of a Marvel villain. Kind of like how, honestly, Killmonger has the potential to be one of the best Marvel villains, and he is, aside from Thanos, but they kind of squash his character in the last 20 minutes and they make him a bad guy who's clear-cut, very by the numbers. In this one, Michael Keaton doesn't have much of a dimension to him. And that's something that I felt that lacks in the movie. Whereas Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire and Alfred Mahoney, you get that great connection, that great interpretation of Dr. Octopus as a fantastically troubled villain. You can sympathize with him while being against him at the same time. Whereas Vulture, it's Michael Keaton. I think they're kind of riding off of that. As for the action in the film, I actually did enjoy it. I didn't think that Tony Stark was really tacked on except for that one part where he, you know, comes in and saves the boat, even though that's impossible. There are definitely some people who fell through the holes and got squished. And something else that's very, very evident that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about is this is essentially Iron Man 3 almost to a T. To the literal point where Peter has his suit taken away from him and he has to rely off of being Spider-Man as himself, literally the embodiment of this hero, to defeat the villains and to overcome his adversaries. I did like that there's a little nods here and there to different comic panels, especially where he's lifting up the pillars. That's pretty much one of the most famous comic book panels of Spider-Man in his history. But like I said, this movie does take a lot from Iron Man 3, a lot more than most people are willing to admit. That doesn't mean the movie's bad. If you're talking about a Marvel movie formula being formulaic, this is literally a formulaic formula of a formulaic Marvel movie. So while I do admit there are some issues narrative-wise, villain-wise, and kind of copycat-wise, Spider-Man Homecoming is still a very good Spider-Man movie. In terms of ranking this film with other Spider-Man movies, it's third best in my opinion. 
with Spider-Man 2 just being above it, and then Into the Spider-Verse being the G-O-A-T, the GOAT of them all! But in terms of a number rating for this movie, I'm gonna give Spider-Man Homecoming a 5 out of 7. I did enjoy this movie, I understood why people liked this movie, and it admittedly was a nice surprise and a refresher after the terrible Andrew Garfield movies, but it's still not the best Spider-Man movie in my opinion, and it wasn't before Into the Spider-Verse came out either. But that's just my personal opinion. Donate me. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I know it's like years too late, but hey, at least I'm late to the party rather than completely screwing up the timeline with that one eight years later line. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, I finally understand what everyone was complaining about from this film, because honestly I had no idea what the hell that was about. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably wondering who I am. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural. Or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.